In a technique that is very similar to thin layer chromatography, you will apply column chromatography to separate pigments from spinach today. You have already learned the techniques required to extract the pigment mixture from spinach. These are extraction with the separatory funnel, gravity filtration, and vacuum evaporation of organic solvents. Once you have completed the extraction and you have your spinach extract, you will set up the column chromatography apparatus as follows. You will need your column, column funnel, lure tip, and column stopcock. They're pretty delicate plastic pieces, and they have to fit in in a certain order. So the stopcock should be closed at a 90 degree angle, and the lure tip fits into the top. That fits into the bottom of the column. Sometimes it gets stuck, and the column funnel fits into the top. So once you have all of these pieces assembled, you have the column chromatography column set up. Once you've completed the assembly of the chromatography column, take it over to your ventilated cabinet and attach it to the smallest clamp in your collection. You need to make sure you clamp it as vertically as possible. This might take some adjustment with the clamps, but when you're finished, it should be as vertical as possible and now it's time to prepare the column with the solid support that we'll use that was similar to the TLC plate we had last time, only this time it is alumina. Last time it was silica on your TLC plate. To pack the chromatography column, we're starting with a technique called dry packing. You need some hexane, a glass pipette, and a yellow pipette bulb. This takes a little practice getting used to, but if you depress the yellow bulb, then dip the tip in the hexane, and then gradually let go of the yellow bulb, you'll succeed to fill the pipette with some hexane. Practice that a couple times so that you get the feel of the elasticity of the bulb, and when you have a bit of hexane in your pipette, take it over to your chromatography column and add it down gently with the stopcock closed. Repeat that process until it's about half full with hexane. When you get about that much hexane, then it's time to start adding our solid support, alumina or aluminum oxide. You can either use a spatula or you can use the weigh boat and kind of tip it. But as you add the alumina, little bits at a time, to the funnel, you'll want to be able to tap your chromatography column to help everything settle a little bit. So it might be better to try to use the weigh boat and add a little bit at a time, tapping the column gently so that everything settles. Takes a while to get there. And you want to fill the column about a third full with the white powder. You can see that you have something already kind of building up, and that's the most solid. So it's nice and fluffy at the top until it gets to be more solid. We also have a little bit of a blockage, and we can take a little bit more hexane and add that to the column to wash everything down. If we add a little bit at a time, that won't happen quite as badly. Oops. So when the column is about a third full, and you haven't spilled as much alumina as I have today, then you'll have a good chance to separate your spinach pigments. But you might have to wash down some of the alumina that's stuck. And we'll go ahead and add all the rest of this, and that should be pretty good for packing our column. So we want to have a lot of hexane. Actually, I've got quite a bit up there. Be tapping. That's a perfect amount of alumina, maybe a little more than we need. At this point, we're going to take our column stopcock and open it and just let some of that hexane drain. We want it to get until it's about maybe a centimeter or so above the alumina. You should have a nicely packed column of the white alumina, nice and even, no color yet. And then we'll be adding our green in just a little bit and then it will change color. Once you have about one centimeter of hexane above the layer of alumina, 
You'll need some sand, which you can find in the fume hood with all your other reagents. And you'll need to take about a centimeter or so of that and add it through the column funnel on top of the layer of alumina. We do that to protect the alumina from anything that we're going to add after we put the sand on there. You can use a little bit more hexane to wash down any of the sand, tap it to make sure it's nice and even, and then open the stopcock again. At this point, we want to drain the hexane all the way to the level of the top of the sand. When we get to that point, that's when we can apply our sample or our green spinach extract onto the column and begin to separate the pigments. Once your column is completely packed, it's time to load the sample. Take the green spinach extract you isolated earlier and dissolve it in a minimum amount of hexane. Again, this might take some practice with a pipette and pipette bulb, but you only want a few milliliters and you may need to swirl the hexane around in order to dissolve as much of the green spinach as possible. Some of it's still going to coat the flask and it will still be dark green, but uh, the more you can get, the better results you're going to have in this result experiment. Once you have something about like that, take the pipette bulb and pipette and use it to suck up all the green. If you don't get it all the first try, that's okay and take it over to the sample once you have the solvent level even with the sand and gently run this down the side of the column so that you apply it all evenly at once in a minimum amount of hexane. So that's a pretty concentrated band. We're not going to use this pipette anymore so we can discard it, but we do need to load the green spinach extract onto the column. So now we'll open the stopcock and continue to drain the solvent level so that the top of the green is again even with the sand. You'll see the sand start, start, start to turn green as well as the alumina once the spinach extract reaches that. And at some point, it's going to stop moving and stay stuck sort of at the top of the column. All right, that's about an appropriate solvent level. At this point, you would add a little bit more hexane. For the purposes of today's demonstration, I'm going to skip ahead to the next more polar solvent, 10% acetone and hexane, which is going to be a little bit more effective in creating a separation. Suck a little bit up with the pipette and bring it over to the column and add it to the top of the column. Because the solvent is slightly more polar, it's going to help elute the first pigment from our sample in the spinach pigment extract and we'll need to be patient and watch as the appearance of the column changes once we've changed the solvent and continue to let the solvent elute from the column. The tighter and more even the band is, the better your column is packed. And we want to just collect the orange here, so we're not quite ready to switch to a clean flask, but that's going to be the point. We start to see this kind of turn orange. We'll go ahead and switch flasks to collect the orange band separately. We want it to be as concentrated as possible for the UV vis analysis. All right, it's probably a good time to switch to a clean flask. We got stuff looking a little bit orange. Yep, you can tell looking at the stopcock that it's got a slightly darker color. And now we're collecting the first band, which is an orange pigment that you'll be analyzing with the UV vis spectrophotometer.
So before it gets too dilute, you can turn off the column, still paying attention to the solvent level, and you'll have collected the first band, which is bright orange. You guys will switch then to a slightly more polar solvent in order to elute the next pigment and continue until you can do the UV-vis analysis of both samples. Good luck.